Hey folks, Nicholas Field here, and in this video I'm going to share with you my five favorite plugins from the Plugin Alliance Mix and Master Bundle. Now, I picked up this bundle for the first time maybe four months ago, and while it's really sick, it also comes with like 150 different plugins, which can be a lot to navigate. So I decided to share my five favorites from this bundle, just to make it a little bit easier if you're starting out with it. Um, or if you've been with it for a while and you still haven't tried every single thing, uh, give these ones a shot, because I've, they've been finding their way onto pretty much every mix so far. So looking at my Ableton here, I've, I've blown up the window a bit to make it easier for you all to see. And the first one I'm going to show you is the Acme Opticom XLA3. It's basically just an, an optical compressor, but this one has a lot of character to it. And it's certainly not for every application because it's pretty gritty. Um, but for what I'm doing, I find it quite helpful because, uh, you know, it can thicken things up, it can add some dirt, and it can make it feel a little bit more vibey, which is always what I'm going for when I'm making electronic music. So without further ado, I'm going to play the little synth line that I set up, and then I'm going to turn it on and show you how it sounds. This is just the dry synth part. This is with compression activated. So as you can hear, the perceived value, the perceived volume has gone up quite a bit. And next I'm going to engage the response to make it faster. a nice overdriven quality. It's a little bit more percussive, transient heavy. And that I probably would never fuck with. But I enjoy it set up like this. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of like an overdrive pedal, in the way that an overdrive pedal will, um, it will compress your signal, but it also applies a lot of um, a lot of sonic character to whatever's coming out the other side, right? So there's that. Um, the next thing I want to show you is the Mag EQ2. This is a an EQ, I believe it's a passive EQ, and it's famous for the air setting, which enables you to add a lot of high uh, high end energy to whatever it is that you're working on. It can be really useful on drums. Um, samples that are sounding a little bit dull if you need to like liven up liven up elements of a mix by just adding a little bit of that uh, high end so I'll show you what it sounds like on this little synth part so as you can see there's an air band here and I'm just going to turn up the gain on the air band and turn it up to maybe 15. So you can hear, this is quite aggressive with the gain, but it adds a, a lot of nice, just like energy, right? Because with electronic music, I like to think of high frequencies as energy, as in, and they add energy to a mix. So sometimes I'll, I will actually take this and automate the gain and turn it up where in areas where I feel like it needs more high-end energy. Um, yeah, that's it. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can hear it a lot more in a lot more extreme way on drums. So maybe I'll show you the drum the drums I have set up here. Uh, and 
Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot gnarlier right there. <laughs> Which, sometimes that's what you need. I don't know. Uh, and then next, I've got the Shadow Hills Mastering Comp, uh, the Class A. Uh, this one is really sick. It's just like a very powerful compressor. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot going on here. Um, what I like about it is that it has these uh, nickel and steel, like different variations in iron. Uh, so you, when you're applying it to a signal, you can change the character of the compression. And it just has like a subtle effect on, like if you stack it in a mix, it can be pretty powerful. And this also has a nice mono setting and you can add width, you can uh, basically run it as a parallel compressor. And all of that is just right there, which is really cool. It kind of takes a lot of the guesswork out of doing car parallel compression and that type of thing. Um, and I find it just a really pleasant sounding, like, although it's like really extreme for a lot of things, I like to just throw it on drums and put it pretty gentle. Um, maybe I'll leave that on there. And then we'll look at the SPL Transient Designer Plus. Now this little puppy is super sick for drums. It basically allows you to change the transient character of any signal. And so I'm going to show you what it sounds like with some hi-hats. So you can reduce the attack, turn up the attack, and reduce the sustain. You can also do a parallel mix. which can have some cool effects because it, it can really thicken up a drum sound. So there we have 50% and you're hearing some of the original hi-hat and some of the processed. And this is also surprisingly like very useful tool for um, bass and for synthesizer and for anything that like like if you're tr if you're trying to use a compressor and you're not having too much luck with a compressor trying to squash some transients uh, it's a creative approach that will help you to reduce some of the um some some of those peaks right and shape them which can be really useful when you're making specifically when you're making electronic music because there's no rules for this stuff right um and finally my the creme de la creme of these plugins, I feel like, is the Vertigo VSM-3. Uh, it's a saturator, and I f originally started using the UAD version, and I was maxing out my UAD sound card all the time, so I switched over to the Vertigo. Um, this is the reason that I got the Plugin Alliance bundle to begin with, and I just love how this sounds on almost any electronic instrument, because I find it adds a lot of 3D depth and character. So I'm going to show you what that sounds like to me right now. Mm. Hello? Oh, there we go. Vertigo VSM3. So this is without, this is with, and so basically it has um, multiple stages of, of like saturation. So the second harmonic uh, FET crusher is basically like a, f a FET modeling overdrive. 
and you can change the frequency band that you want it to impact. And then the third harmonic, Zener Blender, is a, another area where you can choose the frequency band that you want to impact. So this is it processed. This is it without. And to me, it just sounds like, I don't know, like it just sounds a little bit more um, deep, I guess. And while I like it on, on synthesizers from time to time, I think it really shines on drums. So I'm going to show you. Now, when you first turn it on, it sounds a little bit extreme because it's running on the whole track, basically. But I generally like to bring one down to the mids and one to the highs. And what this does is just, I think, opens things up. Now, with all these plugins engaged, let's listen to what this little arrangement sounds like. thick, very minimal arrangement, but I think it sounds vibey. And it's all electronic, it's all software instruments too, which, you know, it's pretty hard to, uh, pretty hard to beat the, the quick workflow of Ableton. And these plugins really enable you to get some cool analog sounding type sounds. So that's that. If this video has been helpful to you, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm always creating little videos to help folks out with production, um, whether it's creating electronic music, learning how to use hardware, um, and other aspects of mixing and audio engineering more generally. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace. <laughs>